Hello electronics enthusiasts and wannabe spies. This time we will build another very simple FM spy transmitter. It uses one of the VCOs from Maxim from the Max 260 something series. Depending on the configuration, the same board can be used for any frequency between 45 and 650 MHz. And even though there is no crystal, the frequency is pretty stable and the line of sight range is more than 150 meters at 85 MHz. Here we can see the circuit with the microphone to the left. The audio signal then goes directly to the VCO input of the IC. And for this build I use the MAX 2606. The frequency is determined by the inductor L1. Then there is the antenna which is connected to TP1. You can see the corresponding board here. It measures 10 by 10 by 9 millimeter with two 397 button cells. This is an extract from the IC data sheet and it shows how the oscillator frequency changes with the inductance value of L1. For the other ICs in this series the value of L1 has to be adjusted and all the information necessary can be found in the data sheet. Here we can see a little comparison in size and as always we start again with the PCB. The Gerber files necessary to produce the PCB can be found under the link in the video description. You can upload them to your favorite PCB manufacturer. Uh, I used again Oshpark.com because it costs only about a dollar with free shipping. And again we will work with the hot plate and solder paste. The hot plate is not absolutely necessary. It could be done with an oven too. The solder paste however is needed since the microphone doesn't have pins that can be soldered with a soldering iron. First we put some solder paste on each pad. Then the components are placed on the PCB. I start with the microphone here. R1, that's about 50k, 50 kilo ohm. It's not a critical value at all. It could be anything near 50k, maybe even 10k to 100k. The only thing it needs to be the same as R2. C3, that's a 100 nano capac nanofarad capacitor. By the way, all capacitors and resistors are 0402 packages. Then another 100 nanofarad capacitor, a 1 kilo ohm resistor, then a 680 picofarad capacitor, also not a critical value. These values can or should be adjusted depending on the configuration of the circuit and more details you will find in the IC datasheet. Here is a 4.7 picofarad capacitor to couple the antenna to the circuit. That's a value that will need to be optimized depending on frequency. Then a 680 nano Henry inductor in a 1008 package and 560 nano Henry for L1 also in a 1008 package. You should use wire wound inductors with the highest available quality factor. Last but not least, the IC, here the MAX 2606. I heat the hot plate up to 250 degrees Celsius and wait for the solder paste to melt.
The 4.7 picofarad capacitor has to be reworked with a soldering iron. Next we need to assemble the battery holder. This is actually a battery holder for a single 5.2mm thick 1.5 button cell, but we will use two 2.6mm thick coin cells in series, because we need 3 volt for the IC to work. Next a quarter wavelength antenna wire will be connected. There's very little ground on that PCB, therefore you will get a much better range if you connect another quarter wavelength wire to ground also, or as I did here for this test, to one terminal of the battery holder. Now here's the battery, a 397 or SR726 button cell. We need two of them in series. They have about 30 milliamp hours, but are not high drain batteries. My guess is at 2 milliampere current consumption they will do maybe 10 hours continuously. In order to avoid connecting the positive pole of the battery next to the PCB to the battery holder, we will need to put some insulation tape around it and I used captain tape here. We push the battery in place and verify the voltage on the board. And this is the whole thing assembled and working. We see the two quarter wavelength wires and the battery again in the back. Now let's test it. That's it guys, thanks for watching and see you next time.